Greetings world. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. The Canadian Witness Protection Program Act established in 1996 is an act respecting the establishment and operation of a federal program for the protection of certain persons providing information or assistance and respecting the protection of persons admitted to certain provincial or municipal protection programs. Any police force in Canada or abroad can ask for assistance from the program. The RCMP has full-time dedicated witness protection units spread out across Canada, and employs coordinators who are RCMP police officers with specialized training to provide these services. But as it remains as a secretive program, law enforcement still violates people's rights while they are in the program. RCMP investigators continue to contact people in the Federal Witness Protection Program, which may affect the safety of those being protected. After a witness is referred to the WPP, the Witness Management Unit or investigators sometimes continue contact with protectees unbeknownst to the WPP and in some cases perform tasks that fall within the responsibility of the WPP. This overlapping of activities could potentially cause safety and other concerns for the protectee. Because of issues like this, the whole program was overhauled by legislation passed in 2014 but it still happens. A woman who helped on drug case says RCMP compromised her identity which forced her into witness protection sued the RCMP for negligence and for undermining her trusted relationship with Canada's National Police Force. The details of her case are contained in a judgment by Ontario Superior Court Justice forcing the RCMP to continue financially support the woman, as well as allowing her to expand the scope of her lawsuit against the Mounties. The heavily redacted court ruling summarizes the woman's claims, which included that after tipping off police about a drug crime, the RCMP compromised her identity and refused to own up to it. She did the right thing, only to lose it all, family, friends, a good job and her mental health. It wasn't long before the RCMP perceived a threat to her safety and moved her to a new location. Even though she had not officially entered the witness protection program, she had to leave her old life behind. The RCMP gave her a one-time payment of $150,000 as well as a $25,000 reward for her assistance in the case. The court ruling states that after happening upon intelligence related to a crime syndicate, she shared what she knew with her municipal police force. The RCMP then used that information to investigate and prosecute several members of a criminal syndicate on drug-related charges. But when she received something from the threat zone where she had once lived, the Mounties recommended she formally enter the Federal Witness Protection Program. Doing so meant she had to sign an agreement promising not make any claims against the RCMP for any damages caused by her participation in the program. In discovery she says her lawyer heard audio recordings where members of the RCMP admitted the force had made ill-advised decisions in her case along with revealing her identity. The RCMP also allows gang members into witness program as part of modernization, and revelations five years ago found that a protectee committed murder while in the program triggered a review and discussion that continues to this day. The federal government has been working for years on revamping the witness protection regime following recommendations from a Commons committee. An inquiry into the 1985 Air India bombing and extensive consultations with the provinces. Changes currently being introduced include the use of specialists in the psychological and social fields to ensure the entry of new protectees is as seamless as possible.
Just recently a motorcycle patch member turned informant having turned on his underworld associates in exchange for government protection. The Saskatoon man says his life is even more endangered now because of almost three years of RCMP negligence. His lawyer says the integrity of the federal witness protection program is at risk and to make matters worse for his client. Its failings have left the former high-level gangster broke. The program states that it operates by focusing on protectees, ensuring their safety, addressing their needs such as counseling, addiction treatment, and allows for their self-sufficiency and easy re-establishment. It also states that alternate measures can also be used when a witness either refuses protective measures or is deemed unsuitable for the program. My question is, if their safety is number one, then why have there been several negligence lawsuits as well as other lawsuits for various other complaints in relation to RCMP not abiding by any of the procedures? as well as not looking after anyone in the program and leaving them broke and their safety at risk still. And if someone refuses the program or deemed unsuitable for the program, what are these alternate measures and do they not protect individuals as well? We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.